Lord Jesus, we just ask you, Lord God, to help us to cast our cares upon you, Lord Jesus. Help us to lift up the family right now, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you, Heavenly Father. That you'll have your way upon everybody's life here in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just wanted to give a quick testimony. Um, I didn't know Jim was going to be calling me up, but I felt the urge to share. This is my little son. Yeah, little. <laughs> He's only 15 years wow. old. Wow, wow. And nice looking you. last year, we found out that his grandma needed some help. But if you keep in mind how big he is, um, last November, sorry, he moved out here to Fort and September, I believe, of 2023, August, and um, God put it upon his heart to come and help his grandma for the winter, take care of God. pellets, God. snow removal, etc. I'll backtrack a little bit. Do I have a few minutes? I hope yeah. I have a few minutes. So, I have four children. My oldest is 20. I have a 17 year old and a 15 year old. We, I, I really feel it on my heart to share tonight about the traumas that we faced because we all know it. It doesn't matter who we are or where we come from. We've all faced some traumas in our life. So I have two children that I've really struggled with Back to one, just hearing about suicide. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in the psych ward with one child, in and out, back and forth to ER, and I focused on the one child, neglecting my other three. And then next thing you know, we got through the storm with her. And then my 17 year old, I started going through the storm with him. <sighs> next thing you know, he's out there, Robbing liquor stores is what the police were saying. Smashing windows in Prince George. Now I grew up in church. I raised my children in church. I sent them to Christian school in Prince George all their life. Other than sending him to Fort St. James Secondary School, they've gone to Christian school all their life. The 17 year olds is now in jail. But before that, I was begging God, don't take my baby. I already have one out here in Fort, and I didn't want to be an empty nester. So going from trauma to trauma to trauma, on top of this, I was taking care of my mom. She has dementia. Trying to work full time and trying to juggle everything. And so I was begging God, don't take my baby, don't put him in jail, keep him home, keep him safe with me. God had other plans. He let the judge put him in jail for 60 days. I thank God for that now because he's not out there drinking. Yeah. They also diagnosed him with schizophrenia, another thing on top of other things. All this trauma, you know. There's many times I had to call 911 just for the safety of our home, for the safety of my mom and my, my household. But through it all, you know, when I started to focus on this and this and this, I wasn't keeping my eyes on the prize. I wasn't focusing on God and His calling on my life. I've been a part of Street Church since they began. My kids were in little playpens that we brought to Street Church. My kids help cook every Sunday for it. But when we started to go astray, just last year I fell off the wagon. I, I fell off the wagon so hard. I landed right in my addiction, as heavy as you could fall into it. I got blacked out drunk. Even in my profession now, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that grip that it could Take upon your heart, your mind, and your soul if you take your eyes off of God and you focus on all these things that you're going through. So tonight, I just want to urge you, I want to encourage you, don't ever take your eyes off of God no matter what you're going through. 
Now, to this day, my 17-year-old son, who was raised in church, he fell asleep under the pews I carried him home. He said, Mom, I don't hear the voices anymore. Hallelujah. Mom, I'm reading the Bible every single day. Hallelujah. Mom, I'm praying to God. my children go astray through all this trials of bringing teens and children up. I focused on the two who were problematic and just this past little while I started to realize I need to pray for all of my children. Not just the two who are struggling but I need to continue to pray blessings upon all four of my children. Now to this year just the final closing of my story, my testimony. My son, you remember how tall he is? He's only 15. He had a freak accident. He lives on an island and we know how remote it is up here. He lives in a cabin all by himself. His grandma in a cabin next door and they have a radio and he radioed hurts and he got injured. She acted fast, she got up, she woke his dad up. I was in Vancouver for work with my mom and my sister. I took my sister along to take care of her. Anyways, we were on a nightly call with my sister Kelly who lives in Cranbrook. She calls every single night to do a Bible study. We were praying and I got a phone call from his dad. And I was like, well, that's strange. He knows I'm, I'm on Bible study. And he kept on calling and calling, and I was I'm not going to hang up on Bible study, but I kind of think, figured I should. But I didn't. I called him from my work phone, and I said, what's up? You know, I'm on Bible study. And he said, there's been an accident. Samuel got injured. We're on our way to the hospital, and that's all he said. Samuel got injured with a sword, and I didn't know to what extent, but I could hear Garth running across the bridge that you can only walk across. Samuel fell on a sword. He got a six inch cut, one and a half inches deep. And it's only by the grace of God that he was able to come and stand before us today. Because God spared his life that day. The amount of blood that he lost by the time he got to his radio to call his grandma and then to unlock his cabin door because it locks automatically and they didn't have the spare key. He collapsed by the time he got there. He was in and out of consciousness. If his dad didn't happen to be up here visiting for the weekend, Samuel wouldn't be here because his dad is just a little bit shorter than me. And somehow he picked him up off the ground. And I know it's by the grace of God because Garth, he's getting older. <laughs> he picked him up and he carried him to the side by side that Ailey and his grandma already had ready to go. <laughs> they drove him to the hospital. He kept on trying to go to sleep, and Garth knew he had to keep him awake. Samuel said, all the way to the hospital, he was saying, if I just go to sleep, I'll wake up and this won't be happening. But if you let somebody wake up I and mean, go to sleep who lost that much blood, they wouldn't be, if that's it, that's the end of their life. So it's by the grace of God, he kept on snapping out of it and waking up. They got to the hospital and the emergency made them, they went to the emergency entrance and the nurse said, this isn't the entrance, you have to walk him to the other side. So he walked yet again to the other side and got in. God spared his life and it's by the grace of God, I know it is. The amount of blood loss in the cabin and outside his, his, what is she, your cousin, thought that they got a moose, that's how much blood was there. <laughs> but don't keep, don't give up praying for your loved ones. I thought there was no hope for my son Christian, but I kept claiming the promises of God. I kept claiming all that he had for my children. And he's doing wonders. Today we went to church at Gateway and my son 
young Christian called, and he said, I'll listen. There's nowhere he can run to in there. There's nowhere he can hide but to bury himself in the word. I thank God for that because who would want to stay on the phone while you're in church and just listen? So it's pretty amazing. I can't thank God enough for my family, for my children. Oh, it's... Praise the Lord. God is good. 